Jessica with the Neuro Studio, and today we are going to do a hip and foot focused exercise. We're going to start lying down on the floor, which is my favorite way to start all exercise, and then we're going to end up with sort of a last challenge exercise standing. So we're going to be lying down, lifting up, coming to quadruped, coming to a lunge, coming up to standing. So first thing we want to do is just actually find a comfortable position lying down on the floor, if that is ever comfortable, and you want to here be in a neutral position, which means um, my pelvis is neutral, so my hip bones, or my ASIS, which aren't really hip bones, my ASIS and my pubic bone are on the same plane, and then I have the natural curve of my spine there, and I actually have a pretty huge um, natural um, lordosis, or lower back curve. And then I want to feel the sense of pulling my legs up in towards the hips a little bit more, um, which I find is difficult to do with a all the way lying down position. So I'm going to bend my knees and bring my feet to the floor. And I have to do a little peek sometimes because so I can't necessarily tell if they are um, at the same level. But we're going to think about drawing your inner thighs towards each other and a slight engagement of your glutes. Not a lot, but just a little bit. So it's almost like if I held something in between my legs, I could pull that something I'm holding in my, between my legs in. And then from here, we're just going to do a little bridge, but we're not going to do it as an articulated bridge. We're gonna do it as a push into really more your heels of your feet and just lift your butt straight up and then it's a hinge to tap your butt straight down. So notice the curve of my spine didn't really change. You're gonna lift up, you should feel squeezing your glutes, and then lower back down. Lift up, you should also feel a little bit of inner thigh engagement because you don't want to let your knees just drop out to the side. We're gonna lift up, and then lower it back down. And because I do wanna work my feet some, I'm going to pull my feet a little bit closer in towards me and then we're going to work on trying to dorsiflex your feet which means flexing your feet to lift them up. You probably notice my right foot is way higher than my left because I have way more range there and we're going to push to lift your hips up and then just again drop back down and lower your feet to the floor. Dorsiflex your feet, lift your hips up, drop your hips down, lengthen your feet. Flex, lift, Hips drop, toes lower. Flex, I'm also trying to spread my toes while I lift up because you can all use a little bit more movement in your feet. We'll do a couple more here. Flex to lift, lower, point one more time. Flex to lift, when you push into your heels, you should feel a little bit more glutes than if you were pushing into your toes. Now I'm gonna walk my feet back even a little bit more because what I wanna do is work on plantar flexion of my feet. So I'll make sure my back isn't arched too much because I feel it is a little bit, so I'm just gonna pull with an exhale. I'm just gonna exhale and see if I can get things to drop a little bit heavier. I'm gonna lift back up again, not really pushing into um, your articulating through your spine. Pop up onto your tiptoes and lower back down. Pop up onto your tiptoes and lower back down. I realize I've slid myself off the mat, but it's reasonably comfortable, so I'm just going to stay here. Make sure that you feel both the big toe and the pinky toe side of your foot when you're lifting up and lowering back down. And this is actually good because we're bent knees here, so it means we're working the soleus, which is, I find a lot of times weaker in people than the gastric, which is a bigger calf muscle. That should work if your legs were straight. Now we're gonna, just going to do a little prance, so we're going to drop one heel and switch. And I have my hands again on my ASIS, so what we generally think of as hip bones, because I want to make sure that one side isn't dropping down as I'm going for my little prance situation here. We'll do last four, two, three, and four. And then we'll lower the heels, drop the hips, and then I'm going to make my way up and I don't actually want to do a roll-up today, so I'm just going to rock myself up to seated. And then we're going to do some straight leg lifts, which works on hip flexion. But we're also going to add some foot movement that would be the logical foot movement. Now, um, depending on how 
loose your hamstrings are, it might be easy enough to sit all the way upright and straight. I actually feel a little tired today, so I'm gonna drop down to my forearms and then just make sure your shoulders aren't collapsing in. So think about drawing your shoulder blades together a little bit. Now, when we walk, we have a paired movement of dorsiflexion and knee flexion and hip flexion all at the same time. So I'm gonna flex my right foot, bend my knee in, lower it down, point my toe. And I'll stay on the right for eight. Here's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, switching legs, point harder on the side for me. I have to really think about flexing and pointing. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Totally normal for, if you have an MS affected side, you have to think about the action more. I always say if people don't have MS, it would be like if I asked you to write with your toes. Like, obviously that would be really difficult for the vast majority of people. Definitely really difficult for people with MS um, or other neurological disease to connect with the side that is not neurologically fully intact. So I wanna do a couple more um, of those, but what I wanna do is try to work a little bit on um, a higher position so that it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. So again, still, this is where my shoulders wanna be. That's not the correct position for them. So I'm gonna put my shoulders back. I'm externally rotated through the shoulders, which should be easier. So I'm gonna lift this foot up, flex, point, but try not to drop it. Flex, point, so I'm working on hip flexion strength. Starting on my stronger leg, we're doing eight. That's five. Six, I can already tell I'm really gonna hate this on the other side. Seven and eight. And then on the other side, flex, point. Two, do not like three, four, five. And if this is too hard, go back to the first one. Six, seven, and eight, and then lower it down. And I know I was kind of sinking into my back because that was like really super hard. Now I'm just gonna to come to a quadruped position. So that means hands and knees. You want your hands to be under your shoulders, knees under your hips. Now if you have any kind of wrist pain, it does not bother me the so if your hands need to come a little bit forward. We're gonna work on kind of the same idea that when your knee flexes and you're coming into hip and knee flexion that your foot should also be flexed. So I'm gonna start um, with my weight into my left leg. Again, I'm trying to get my shoulder blades kind of positioned on my back, length through the back of my neck. And I'm gonna to try to do this without involving my spine. So I don't want my spine rounding too much, um, but it might round because this is going to not be easy. I'm going to send my right leg back. You can start with pointed toes. You're gonna to pull your foot in, flex your foot, point to bring it up. Pull in and point. Pull in and point. Again, we're going for eight, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And lower that back down. Again, I'm going to try to reset my shoulders because I know I have a tendency to push away, especially when things get hard. I'm going to start with my left foot back, pointed toe, flex, point, flex, point, flex, point. So it looks a little crookeder coming in because it's way harder for me on the side. Five, six, seven, and eight. Now let's say I want to work a little bit more on just getting sort of a stretch where my foot is flexed. I'm going to start like kind of in a quadruped with my toes tucked under and I have to really actively try to get my left toes to tuck under because I just don't want to. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift my weight back, 
push more into my um, feet and then drop my knees back down. Push back and forward. Push back and forward. Push back and forward. I can't get all my toes on the floor, so I'm gonna walk my hands back a little bit. See if I can extend my legs a little bit straighter and then bend. Lift up a little bit and bend. Lift up a little bit and bend and lift up a little bit and then coming back to a quadruped position. Now when you are walking and your leg comes into hip extension, which means your leg is pushing back behind you, you push back with your toe pointed. So on this one, what we're going to do, um, we're going to start again on the left knee, try to get shoulder blades back where they're supposed to be, extend your right leg, think about leveling off your hips, but sometimes I have to check because I actually can't tell um, by feel sometimes if they're level, think about plugging your inner thighs towards each other, lift your right leg up, and then you're going to lift it just higher so that you feel like it's coming into hip extension, which you know you do if you feel like a squeeze on your glute, lower it back down, lift two. Lift three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Knee down, little teeny break, reset. Left leg, lift up with a pointed toe, lift, squeeze one, lift, squeeze two, lift, squeeze three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then we'll go ahead and bend. Again, tuck your toes under, trying to get a stretch through your feet so you can walk your hands back some. Shift, and then come down. And I'm really trying to get my big toe joint to stretch more than any of the rest of them because that's really what we need to use to push off. Shift back and come forward. Shift back and come forward. Shift back and come forward. Again, um, making sure that you feel that stretch through your big toe. However it is, you need to sort of finagle yourself into that, that you can put some weight on it and then come a little bit more forward, put some weight on it. So we're taking a little bit of weight off, putting more weight on, taking a little bit of weight off, putting more weight on. It does not have to look pretty, it just has to feel like you're stretching into that joint, which I think is pretty hard for most everyone. Now one of our favorite exercises here is doing what I call the kneeling short lunge, which has always been a hard exercise for me. What you want to do is have a 90 degree bend of your front leg and your back leg. And then I'm just gonna, um, it works as a great hip stabilizer on both legs, um, but we're gonna make it a little bit harder by adding a chop. So we're going to take our arms to the forward leg, which is, in this case, my right leg. We'll go across and then towards your opposite hip. Lift across, towards your opposite hip. I'm trying to keep my arms relatively straight. Here's three. And I really feel my foot and my front leg working to stabilize me. Four.
actually would do a last thing, which is going to be super hard for me. And every time I go to a physical therapy, they always want me to jump. Jumping is not my favorite, not a fan. Don't feel good at it. Haven't really done this, so this might not look too pretty. But what I want to do is think about that if I'm jumping, that my feet are what's making me jump, and that when I land, I'm going to not walk my legs straight. So I'm thinking bent knees the entire time. This might be the world's smallest jump. So bent knees, hop for it. That was really small. But I'm just going to go across the mat like this, jump knees, hop forward, jump knees, hop forward, jump knees, hop forward, jump knees, hop forward, and I'm trying to push through my feet to make the hop happen. So we'll go back to the other side. We'll see if I do a little bit better on this side. So we're bent and hop and bent. collapse in when I jump, bend, and hop. Now theoretically you can do this single leg. Remember when I was going to neuro PT and they made me do bounding in a pool which I was very bad at. Um, so I'm actually going to do one more round with the bent knee hop because it's plenty hard enough for me. And I'm going to spread my toes out a little bit more because I find that because I have a lot of weakness in lifting my outside toes up on my left foot, they almost want to tuck under. So I have to think about getting a little bit of a spread. Hop, two, three. If the hop's really too much to you, then you can do um, just little steps forward. So bend, but try to keep your knees bent. Two, and three. And then you can turn it into a squat all the way up. Thank you for joining me for this, um, and I will see you next time.